and I'm supposed to wait a few seconds to be sure that everybody goes live on this. So, <coughs> oh, there we go. <coughs> Hi there. Welcome again, everybody, to what we call Cast Iron Wednesday. Every Wednesday, uh, a whole bunch of cooking channels on YouTube have a tradition of uh, doing a, a video about cast iron. Usually that's cooking in cast iron or uh, cleaning cast iron or identifying cast iron, but usually it has a lot to do with the cooking. And we've done all of that on this channel because, well, I enjoy uh, playing around with cast iron. What can I say? <clears throat> and yes, I've been um, part of this as well. So uh, yes, we have a... Um, Again, if you look around on a whole bunch of those uh, channels, you will see Cast Iron Wednesday, and here we are. Not many of them seem to be doing a lot of video on Wednesday, but that's fine. Uh, I've been doing this largely because, well, it's turned out to be a lot of fun. I've learned a lot from it, and a lot of folks seem to uh, be showing up on a regular basis here on uh, Wednesday night here on YouTube Live, and I can only... Thank you very much for that, because here we go again. As the uh, title of this video says, <laughs> it's pizza night, so <clears throat> we're going to uh, have some chance to uh, play with some uh, cast iron and make a pizza. Um, but hello again to everybody. Well, if you don't mind, I've got to say hi to uh, everybody over here. And, oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, yeah, everybody here. Hello. Hello to Mike M and Pat Z and William Hurt and Cynthia Wesley. Rhode Island Eats. I've been seeing you regularly, and thank you very much. And hello again, Anne. And, uh, yes, Pizza Pizza. And hello to Debbie and uh, Clico and, and New England Vermonter and everybody else who has been uh, kind enough to show up here. Only thank you so much. Actually, I just realized I'm not sure I was close enough to the mic, so I hope you were able to hear me well enough. But yes, indeed, <clears throat> it's Cast Iron Wednesday, and here we are here to play with Cast Iron. <laughs> um, I mentioned already that I'm looking forward to uh, playing around and uh, making a pizza for the first time in my new gas stove. Yes, more about the gas stove again. <laughs> so, but what can I say? I've enjoyed it so far, and uh, it has uh, performed well. So we are. So now we're gonna have to see what it's like to uh, make a pizza, especially when we're gonna be making this pizza in just a little over one hour. Now this is based on a video. <clears throat> I have the link to it already in the uh, description of my uh, of this uh, video. Um, one of the uh, cooking channels that I follow pretty regularly is a uh, professional chef who, whose name is Brian Lagerstrom, if I'm pronouncing that right, and he has. Um, made quite a name for himself as uh, probably the king of YouTube pizza and uh, that he's done a whole bunch of outstanding pizza videos. And only within the last uh, week or two, he uh, came up with one, which basically is cast iron pan pizza in one hour from start to finish. So, and since uh, that uh, should uh, cover pretty much the entire length of this video, uh, I figured let's give it a try especially since <clears throat> he gets to do it in a 12-inch cast iron pan. So there's an excuse to uh, throw, to um, indeed play with some cast iron. And so let me uh, move the uh, camera a little bit and uh, get a uh, view here and see what we got because here we go. This is a 12-inch uh, cast iron pan that I'm uh, actually quite proud of. I think I've said this part before. One second, please. Adjust this mic. Slightly. There we go. <clears throat> anyway, this is a cast iron pan that uh, I've uh, really enjoyed. And it is, in fact, just a little more than 12 inches in size. In fact, it's 30 centimeters in size. This is a uh, really unique one as well because it was made by Solid Technics uh, of Australia when they were making cast iron. Uh, they discontinued their cast iron production a few years ago and are now only making what they called, uh, what do they call it now? Wrought iron, I think, uh, as well as uh, as well as carbon steel. So they are no longer making this particular one, which is a shame because as you can see, this is a really nice looking pan here. It's 12 inches, uh, actually again, 30 centimeters in size, a little bit more than 12 inches. And uh, it's got a really great design to it as well as quite a bit of weight <clears throat> and I've already uh, made a few pizzas in this, and now we have a chance to uh, indeed make this one. 
Now, one of the first thing, yeah, one trick that Brian says, though, in his video is uh, what he wants to do is, <clears throat> in addition to the cast iron pan, he takes his pizza steel and heats it up in the oven as well, so that when this pizza is ready to bake, we're going to place this on the, uh, p uh, he places it on the pizza steel so that it gives more uh, heating, whoops, more heating to the bottom. Well, needless to say, I don't have a pizza steel. Rather, what I've usually been using for making pizza, of course, is uh, grunt, grunt. my good old 15-inch uh, 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 number 14 skillet here, which I call Stumpy. However, there is one slight problem with using Stumpy this week. Yeah is that this 12-inch uh, pan is not, unfortunately, going to be able to fit on the bottom. So I'm sorry to say, Stumpy is actually going to have to sit this one out, regrettably. Which means... Uh, <clears throat> Fortunately, if you're doing this video, there are a lot of other options to choose from. I mean, one option that could work very well would be to use a uh, griddle, the nice 12-inch uh, cast iron griddle. which in this case is still not quite right because uh, the bottom of this is uh, the bottom of this 12 inch pan is still not contacting this side uh, directly. So in that case, I've got to uh, figure something else out. Well, to be precise, oh, let me put this aside right now. Fortunately, it, as it turns out, we do have one other thing that I think will work uh, just perfectly on this. <clears throat> Those of you who know Lodge's uh, baking series may recognize this one. This is their newly designed and released within the last uh, couple of years or so, the Lodge Pizza Pan, a 15-inch wide pizza pan. And uh, I was reluctant to get this one for a while because, of course, I had good old Stumpy here to uh, use uh, for uh, making pizzas. However, there is one thing about this newly designed pan. You remember they had another pizza pan that did have a rim around the edge. This one doesn't. It is completely flat. And that means ugh, this pan will sit on uh, that one just, uh, just fine. So uh, this looks like this is what we're going to be heating in the oven instead of a pizza steel. Um, let me move this. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to try while we're here. Boy, am I grunting a lot tonight. Let me try uh, one other thing. Hmm. Well, that seems to fit pretty good in that it might actually be a nice uh, airtight lid for old Stumpy here, except it's not really sealed very well. And if I used it in a, an unstable uh, um, situation, it could probably slide off. But it might actually work as a, a lid at some point. Anyway, let's move this aside. Uh. So, as I said, uh, we will be seeing more of good old Stumpy. He's, uh, he's appeared in a number of videos, and he's going to appear in several more. Right now, though, I just have to take one second and move this griddle aside here. Oh, boy, this thing's heavy. Uh. There we go. Get it out of the way here. And that means now, let's do this. And we can uh, get down to some, well, preparations here so that means now once again i've got to uh, adjust this as best as i can pardon me again for the roller coaster ride folks but there we go this and that there we go this is a pretty good view right here let me quickly see it comment or two on this, and then we will get down to some uh, preparation here. So thank you so much. Like Val's Black Cat's Rules, I made a cheap frozen pizza from Aldi, and it came out good. And yes, Cast Iron does a great job in heating store-bought pizza, too. So uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, got one of those pizza pans works great. 
And yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah, well, considering as well that delivery pizza, like everything else, the price of it has skyrocketed lately. So, um, you know, considering that now, I doubt anybody spends less than 30 to $50 whenever they uh, order pizza out, order uh, pizza delivery. Uh, the cost of this is going to be considerably less as well, too. So that'll certainly help. And having said that, let's uh, get started and see how it works. And why does this thing like this? Hold on one second. Always got to try to tighten this up a little bit if possible. Yes, there we go. I want to be able to talk right. Okay. Now, that means, since we're actually starting from scratch, here we go, right about here. Okay, the recipe itself, this actually won't take very long, I, I will uh, say that. It's going to take a little longer than an hour because I'm talking my way through it on a live video. If I were just doing this uh, without uh, being live, it would, it would go a little faster. Nonetheless, first things first. Okay. Uh, we have some beer is the first thing, which I have already heated up to, it says, about 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The beer is meant to substitute for the, like, 48-hour or so rise that you usually do when rising pizza doughs kind of speeds it up. So we uh, start ourselves with eight ounces of beer. And then from there, mix in da -da 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 -da. Uh, 10 grams or three and a half teaspoons. Yeah, teaspoons? Yeah, teaspoons of instant yeast. Oh, and here I regret to say, unfortunately, I can't find my scale. I'm positive I packed my scale, yet I've been having trouble finding it. So I can only hope I come across it as, uh, I've got more and more boxes unpacked. There's one, two, three, and about a half. There we go. Okay, in addition to that, we've got sugar, olive oil, and salt, which is one and a quarter teaspoons of sugar. One, one. I also have to replace my measuring cups too, so that worries me a little bit nonetheless. Okay. <clears throat> And in addition, we've got one and a quarter teaspoons of olive oil. Come on. One. I think I'll do it this way. Two. Three, four, and five. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Mix in sugar, olive oil, and salt. Salt is about one and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay, that's why I didn't put liquid in the uh, tea in the uh, other spoons. <clears throat> One, two, three. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Hmm. I always love those cars in the background. Let's quickly simply get ourselves a big spoon. Mm. 
Okay, add flour, uh, mix in sugar, olive oil, and salt. Add flour and stir to combine with a spoon before switching to a soaking wet hand to finish squeezing and mixing the dough until it forms a cohesive ball. Okay, so far it doesn't say anything about blooming the yeast. So, uh, although it looks like we're getting something already, that means uh, we have bread flour, bread flour. This is, da, 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 there it is, uh, two and a quarter cups of bread flour. One. There we go. Overdoing it should be about a quarter of a cup. So we've got about two and a quarter cups of bread flour here. And as he says, now we start mixing to combine. Boy, this cooking stuff is so hard, isn't it? Actually, that's one reason why I like that guy, Brian Lagerstrom. He does a lot of dishes that I really want to try making. Um, he is different from some of those other uh, cast, uh, some other YouTube uh, cooks. You know, the ones that are really basically live action cartoons, uh, like a certain Josh guy who I've mentioned before. And yeah, I watch his stuff. However, are you, I mean, I'm never really going to try making my uh, pizzas, for instance, or other things the way Josh does. I mean, because it, it, they do turn out looking incredible, but the amount of effort that, as well as expensive um, ingredients that has to be put into that is just going to be, ugh. on the other hand, Brian <clears throat> is a lot more down to earth, and that's why I'm interested in trying his recipe out tonight. So like he says now at this point, we've got to switch to hands. Seems a bit dry. I hope I, I hope I didn't overdo it with the flour. All right. And it says here, until it forms a cohesive ball, I'm a little suspicious, actually. I think I'm going to throw in a, a wee bit more olive oil. Hope that doesn't ruin it, but it just seems a bit too dry for my tastes. Nonetheless... Okay, at this point, we are now supposed to cover and ferment at room temperature for 15 minutes. There we go. That's my wok lid for the record. Okay, so far, so good. At, okay, so at this point, we literally wait 15 minutes. Let me quickly uh, uh, wash my hands. And that means now we can spend a little bit more time, I think, talking about cast iron. We don't have to heat up the uh, pan yet, but we will be uh, doing that uh, very quickly. So let's take another look, I guess, at uh, the Lodge um, pizza pan over here. Let me see if I can get this thing reached over there. There we are. Come on. Hold on one second. This thing's got like a mind of its own today. There we go. That's better. Anyway, yeah, that's the Lodge Pizza Pan, which, as I said, as I said, they came out with uh, a little more than a year ago when they introduced their new baking series. Well, the pans aren't new, although they had not been made by Lodge before. Things like, besides this pizza pan, stuff like a uh, redesigned uh, bread pan, you know, bread loaf pan, as well as their uh, Lodge cast iron pie plate. 
which I also succumb to, and I have over there in my collection. But yeah, as I mentioned, I've made a, a number of uh, things in a good old stumpy there. And so it really getting the large pizza pan for me was probably <laughs> a luxury. Although for today, I will have to say at least it is turning out to be very useful, as you can see, because it's a nice, completely flat um pan with no edges at all and that differs really pretty much from any other cast iron griddle i think i've seen i think this is the first pan i've seen that actually has a flat and rather sharp edge like this so um that it will actually if you if you're the type of person who uh likes to preheat your pizza stone or pizza steel or iron in the oven um you know that if you use your uh pizza peel and try to put it into like say a big cast iron pan or pretty much anything else other than the pizza stone you know the edge can be a problem so having this with a completely flat or lack of an edge is uh, definitely an advantage i think and so yeah that uh that in itself after this i'm definitely going to uh, try making a uh, pizza in the traditional method using this steel here and uh yeah hello uh yeah and sounds like your hubby had a uh oh sinus infection well, i'm sorry about that <laughs> yeah the weather uh, has yeah it is getting dark earlier unfortunately i'm sorry to say yeah i am <laughs> uh, i've i've never liked the cold weather and i'm especially curious as to what it's going to be like here in my new home well i guess i will find out <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, roadside assistance guy, you have the pizza pan. Well, I hope you like it. So, you know, for a while I did have the lodge pizza pan, except I ended up giving it away. As a matter of fact, I believe I gave it away as a Christmas present, I think for Anne's brother, if I remember right. So, uh, black pepper makes the other spices pop more. Well, there is that. I mean, besides, I've got a pepper fetish myself. So uh, I forgot to time it. I'm supposed to be waiting 15 minutes on this. So I, so I think it's only been like maybe about two to three minutes. So right now we're at 22, meaning that if we go to about 35 minutes, that should be more than enough, I think, to uh, do this. So, um, okay. Uh, what do we have here? I have a uh, Bayou Classic 16-inch deep dish pan. Oh, yeah. Those are uh, really, really big, big. Well, yeah, I think I've said this before even when talking about things like Stumpy or maybe having a really big Dutch oven in that. I encourage everyone to actually take the uh, – find some way, whether you find it in the treasure hunt or if you can actually afford this, uh, get yourself at least one really big cast iron pan because you will not regret it and you will get a lot more use out of it than you might think. I mean, like for instance, it's like, what the heck am I going to use a big 16 inch cast iron skillet for? And I'll bet you've gotten a lot of use out of it, not just for uh, making pizza either, although it's great for that. It also makes, say, for instance, it's big enough you could use it as an outdoor griddle. Take it outside and put it over your grill or fire or whatever you want, and there you go. You've got a nice big size griddle with edges as well to prevent spills. So there's something for you right there. Not to mention having a reputation of the guy with a big cast iron pan, uh, aside from the uh, nerd value, um, it also means that, you know, friends, family, church gatherings or the like will know that you have one of those pans and it's entirely possible you may be called to put that into use at one of their uh, little gatherings or something because you can make a lot of food at once in one of those big cast iron pans. Uh, whether So whether it's a really big skillet or a really big Dutch oven, um, I would, again, strongly advise getting taking the uh, time uh, and effort, however you manage to do it. As I said, if you can't afford it, well, just go on the treasure hunt, and with any luck, you may be able to uh, make a score. But get yourself at least one really big cast iron pan. You will enjoy it. <laughs> That's uh, my plug, I guess. So, um, going, still going here. 
Uh, yeah, I made my I made my pizza on my 10 inch or 12 inch skillet, Janet Bautista. And yes, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that's what we're doing tonight. In fact, uh, we are using a 12 inch cast iron pan to uh, make pizza here. So uh, I've always used it for pizza, but you could roast a turkey in it. There is that. Yes, yeah, I'm just in here. Yeah. Guess what's beginning to peak over the horizon, folks? Like it or not, the holidays. So, yeah, we've got to start thinking about things like that, like, for instance, turkeys. And, yes, I have made quite a few uh, turkeys in old Stumpy over the past several years. I mean, I consider Stumpy to be the world's best turkey roasting pan and i've got the videos to prove it too so uh, that's another thing to consider when the holidays uh, roll around and as yeah uh, congratulations on the magnolite oh yes that's right got my magnolite uh, wagner weird dutch oven yeah you will get a lot of use out of that as you can see what i find my magnolite my magnolite for is the best water boiler that I think I've ever owned. So as such, I like using it for, for making pasta and making rice and other kinds of dishes like that. I'm still going to make my soups in cast iron, I think. But uh, nonetheless, if you need something that requires those kind of things, I indeed highly recommend the uh, the um, Dutch oven. I'm sorry, the uh, Wagner Ware. Yeah, the Magnolite Dutch oven. So, and there's no, and uh, best of all, uh, we've said this enough times before as well. Oh, yeah, I've found mag, they called it Magnolite because it's actually a magnesium aluminum alloy. So it's not pure aluminum, but it's good enough and it does a great job boiling water too. Um, someone claimed. They made this uh, with a magnesium aluminum alloy because of that stupid rumor of uh, of aluminum causing Alzheimer's disease. Frankly, I seriously doubt that. I don't think, yeah, as far as I know, the aluminum rumor was not enough to cause any kind of a serious effect in the, well, the marketing or purchasing of aluminum cookware. I mean, after all, it's still going strong even today. So I'm sure they had their reasons for uh, doing that instead of pure aluminum. Probably it may have been, one, a cost-cutting measure, and two, perhaps it may have even uh, worked a little better. Maybe it might be a little more sturdy and maybe a little bit more scratch-proof, perhaps. Uh, but nonetheless, that's why they call it Magnolite. Either way, it's safe to use once it's properly cleaned up. And, and as I've said many times before, and I will continue to say, aluminum cookware is safe for use. It will not cause Alzheimer's disease or cancer or dementia or any of those uh, things like that. So, yes, you can go ahead and uh, keep on using it. So... Hmm. Yeah, I never understand that. People still cook in foil. Yeah, there's one thing. Another, as somebody pointed out, if you go to pretty much any restaurant, you can bet that just about all of the food there is cooked in uh, aluminum. Uh, probably even more so than steel, because I think, yeah, the fact that aluminum is lighter, probably less expensive than solid uh, stainless steel as well. So uh, my biggest is a BSR shallow fish fryer. Oh, those things are wonderful, too. I love my uh, shallow fish fryer. And in fact, that's one of, <laughs> one of many things I still have to pull out. I think I said this already as well. It's like I really want to try pretty much all of my cast iron on this on this gas stove um, at some point. So really, I'd say pretty much for the next who knows how long I'm going to be trying a different kind of cast iron pan each week. I'm already thinking, for instance, for next week, I may pull out the bunt pan and bake a cake uh, in this gas oven and see how well that turns out. Um, yeah, but of course, the uh, sh those shallow fryers as well, the nice thing about them is that they're essentially the same as skillets, very long skillets that will fit over uh, two burners of your stove instead of one, so you can make a lot of food with it. So, And Papa Dan, thank you for the seasoning tip, uh, which uh, because of watching, I may have a lie tank. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, cut down on e-tank time. Now, I love an e-tank. 
but there is there are a couple of drawbacks to the e tank, of course, you know, electrolysis. My biggest drawback to it is the fact that, like it or not, it does use electricity. And if you use it too much, you can see the effect on your electric bill. <laughs> and these days, yeah, that's something to be concerned about. The other, of course, is that the e-tank works great, but you could really only do maybe one pan at a time. And so uh, it can it's a slow it can be a slow process. The lie tank, on the other hand, is even slower. But, of course, you can pull, throw a whole bunch of pins into the lie tank, and uh, then you can pretty much forget about them until they're, until they're ready. They don't use any electricity. So even though it may take weeks or even months to, uh, for a lie tank to do its thing, as I said, there's no reason not to. In fact, one project that I want to do soon before the cold weather comes in is to, well, I, I have to rebuild my lie tank throw in a few pans that I have sitting there and uh, probably let them soak in the lye pretty much for the whole winter and then uh, take them out next spring and get them cleaned up. So there's uh, something to consider right there. So yeah, it does not, yeah, it will not warp at higher temperature. Oh, that would be the uh, Magnolite then. That's certainly a good reason for it. I, I won't disagree there. It's an awesome looking pizza with the shallow fish fry. Yes, no reason not to. Oval shaped pizza, nothing wrong with that at all. Go ahead and use it pretty much. It's cast iron. So it's a small block, number nine Griswold for $9.98. Well, you've made you made yourself a score there. And we are at 32 minutes. In about three more minutes, we'll be able to continue. So thank you for letting me just go blather on and on and on here. Uh, let me do one other thing since we're here. Uh, uh. Here is the... Uh, wonderful. Uh. Sorry about that. Note to self, I'm going to have to get a regular lid for this bowl. But anyway, here is the bottom of the uh, large uh, pizza pan. And as you can see, it's actually not flat. It's circular. But that should not be a problem at all, eating this thing in the oven here. All right. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. But yeah. This lid, in fact, is, uh, as I mentioned, it's a walk lid. What I need to do is go to Wally World and get one or two of their 95-cent so-called pizza pans because that actually makes a great lid for these kind of bowls. So <laughs> I will have to uh, consider that. You know what says uh, War in Ukraine? You know what's... Oh, yeah, nice name. <laughs> you know what's so good about homemade pizza and cast iron? The crispy burnt cheese around the edge. Well, hopefully we will have some of that in uh, just a little while. So gravity works. It's not just a theory anymore. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, <laughs> um, okay. I always find cast iron when I'm not looking. And when I'm looking, I don't find every anything. Yeah, that's usually how it happens. Even at places like, say, Brimfield or the like, uh, you really can't go and specifically look for something. You have to just go there and uh, really let it happen. <laughs> Almost magical, if you ask me. Um, and, okay, maybe one more minute, and then we will be uh, on to uh, the next step here. And a small block, number nine, Griswold. No, we said that part already. Yeah, so far, actually, I'm thinking we're probably getting to the point where we may be able to start uh, preheating this pan. Anyway, what we're supposed to do now, all right, bringing up the next part of this recipe here. Okay, until a, okay, cover in for men. Perform a strength building fold. Oh yeah, that's the uh, that's the thing. I don't know if he's patented that move or not, but nonetheless, uh, cover and ferment at room temperature for another fifteen minutes. Well, that doesn't help much. However, at this point, then I think we're going to start uh, preheating the uh, cast iron. So let me pull this over a little bit. Yeah, for a one-hour pizza, most of it is just simply spent, uh, well, just resting. Okay, now that we've done that, he said he uses what he calls the strength-building fold, meaning that we lift the corner, 
and fold it over and do it again and do it again and one more time And the impressive thing for him is that he only does that, and he calls it a strength-building fold. That in itself apparently builds just a little bit of gluten. I am worried. I really hope this did not dry out too much. In fact, I'm going to cheat again. There we go. That's not part of the recipe. But as I said, using the measurements that he provided, although he usually does grams, I, am not, I have not been able to find my scale yet, so I could not do grams, and that's why I had to do cups. Maybe that's why it seemed to turn out a little bit too dry. But nonetheless, ah. and now at this point, we get to wait about another 15 minutes. Give me a second to wash my hand one more time. Okay. However, having said that, let's bring it. Let's uh, let me uh, play around with this a little bit. In that, as I mentioned, Stumpy is uh, going to be uh, essentially just uh, put aside tonight. So let me do that right now and make a little bit of room. Okay, that means. Uh, Okay, Stumpy, you move over here. Holy cow. Ugh. And in fact, I'd say we can probably even start heating up the uh, heating up the uh, pizza pan. So that means. We get to move over here again to that gas stove I have been uh, pretty much, um, you know, drooling over. Well, fortunately, not drooling, at least not yet. Uh, okay, that means in we go. Hmm. I already moved it to the lowest rack, and with that, we get to heat this up to the max. Yeah, that might work. So instead of 500 degrees, this oven is going to reach 550 degrees. All the better for making pizza. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I could not believe what happened this morning when I posted that uh, silly little video. Whoops, why is there a cord in front of here? That silly little video of adjusting my stove. Uh, I can't believe I did that uh, as a uh, just on a whim, you know, a sh little short. That's about 25 seconds. And that thing has already gotten about 5,000 views today. It reminds me of what happened when I made that uh, can opener video a few years ago. That was another thing I just made in like about five minutes on a Saturday morning. I think, okay, let's play around with a can opener. And lo and behold, that thing just blew up and became like the second or third most popular video on my entire channel. So now I made a silly little 20 second video again of simply adjusting my adjusting the feet on my stove so that the top will be a little more level. And like I said, that thing's gotten 5,000 views today already. I'm yeah, 
Uh, I'm enjoying it. Yes. I mean, great. I mean, I love the views. It's just, it, it's shocking. It really took me by surprise. And why can't that happen with one of my uh, cast iron videos? So. <laughs> okay. Um, regrettably, I, I haven't heard anything from Jamie and I can only hope that she's, uh, doing okay. I'm sorry to say, uh, regrettably there's been, uh, very little contact and, and my apologies for that. Oh, I need to do that. Yeah. The oil runs to the back of the skillet. Yeah. It, all it is, it seems like that apparently is a standard on just about any major appliance uh, these days, whether we're talking like a dishwasher, washing machine, or a stove. All you need to do is, well, use a simple level and uh, just adjust it with a uh, pliers or a wrench. Hmm. Uh, you don't know that have, okay, what am I, what was, what is this? You don't know how many of us, especially women that love doing stuff for self, you help out. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I can only hope that uh, does turn out to be useful. So thank you so much. But yeah, all it really took was a few turns with the, I used the pliers to uh, adjust the legs of that stove until it, until it leveled out. And so now the next time I actually cook in, in my skillet, the oil should be uh, more evenly distributed in the pan. And I'm looking forward to that. So is rebar hard to keep clean in your e tank? Um, I would. My understanding is it attracts rust very well, and so um, the thing is, of course, even if it's rusty, you can continue using it in your e tank at least for a while. I see uh, on some videos some people take their rusty. Uh, sacrificial uh, metal out of the e tank every so often, and just go over it with a uh, like a, a sander or something like that to get rid of some of the rust. But I understand they just keep doing it until it uh, simply dissolves and or and uh, falls apart. So that's um, and as long as as long as it works, I guess that's the thing. So hmm. um, and thought there was uh, something with the pizza. Okay. Okay, um, Mike, that is fun. Then after you get home, you can fill the uh, pockets. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going over the uh, comments right now. I like the new background. <laughs> oh, yeah, the nature of sound. Yeah, I noticed that. The crickets in this area sure are loud, aren't they? <laughs> I was a little surprised myself. I guess that's what I get for actually having a house with a lawn and a yard instead of living in an apartment like I pretty, I've done pretty much my entire life. In fact, within the next couple of weeks, I have to go outside and learn how to mow the lawn for the first time. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. Uh, Mike M. Outdoor flea markets is, is where I've found my oldest, best cast iron finds. Sure is a lot of fun. Yeah, I've had a lot more luck at flea markets than I have at antique malls. There are a few instances where I found a, whoops, sorry, where I made a uh, good score at an antique mall, but those have been few and far between. Although there is one in my area here, the Oweg the early Owego Antique Center, that I that uh, is a great place to visit, and I haven't done that yet. And I that's another thing I need to do uh, pretty quickly. Electric push mower, <laughs> yeah. Use a golf ball in the center of your top to level. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I was debating whether or not I might try simply a non-electric push mower. On the other hand, I realize those things do take a lot of effort. So, <laughs> um, but as I said, I have never used a lawnmower before, so I can only see how well that turns out. Uh, there is Dad How Do I channel with 4.22 million subscribers. <laughs> And I'm guessing they probably make a lot of videos like that adjusting the stove type of video, I presume. So you never mowed a lawn. No, I haven't. Watch out for the uh, ants and yellow jackets. No, it's true. I have never mowed a lawn. I've lived in apartments for my entire life. I'm thinking even as a kid, well, 
at least until I moved, my parents actually bought their own house in my junior year of high school, meaning that I spent my senior year of high school living in a house with my parents. And then I graduated and moved out and have been living in apartments <laughs> pretty much my entire life after that, including after I got married. So yeah, this whole house ownership thing has definitely been new to me. I will say that. And it looks like we are already going on. We are only at about five more minutes before we can move on to the uh, next step here. So thank you uh, again to everybody for uh, waiting here. Mouth and finger. I wanted to ask the same mouth and fingers wouldn't move. <laughs> we picked up a uh, fit. What's this say? A uh, oh. A Fisker's uh, push mower, uh, $20 at a yard sale. Nice. Well that, well, that was definitely a good score. So lawn here and small. Yeah, no, I do not have a large yard. I only have a small one, and that was intentional for precisely that reason. Uh, because I've never really done an outdoor yard, done outdoor yard work, I was actually afraid to uh, get a, a big parcel of land. Uh, that I may spend far too much time having to take care of because, well, I have enough trouble just taking care of this house. That's for sure. <laughs> Keep your hands and feet away from the bottom of the mower. Yes, definitely. No arguments there. So, <laughs> and yeah, I certainly hope so, William Hurt. We can only see how things happen over the next few months with the, with winter coming. Oh, hi, Trouble. Yay, hey, hey, Trouble. How are you doing now, huh? Hi, Trouble. Hmm. Hello. Hi, Trouble. Hi. Okay. Back to business. All right. Back to the cast iron. Or more precisely, back to the pizza. I think most of the waiting is over at this point, and now we get to the uh, more interesting stuff. All right. Uh, uh oh, it's the fuzz. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can feel the heat coming from the oven already, so we are doing pretty good so far. Hmm. <laughs> I trouble. Oh, sure. Every time I turn the camera on him, he moves away. He's gotten too smart for that. Okay. Back to business. Da, 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 da. All right. Covering from any, Okay. Now at this point, oh, transfer dome to a well-oiled uh, cast iron skillet. With oiled fingers, press down to fill the shape of the pan. Cover and allow to rest for 10 minutes. Okay, good. That means we do get to uh, play with some cast iron here. Let me move these out of the way. And yeah, yeah, you too. Bring out. Ugh. Here we go. I think we can move a little closer if possible. There we go. The that means now we get to uh, oil our pan. All right, that uh, that uh, oil dispenser uh, cap, in fact, I picked up at a specialty shop in Boston, and I very much enjoy it because, as you can see, it uh, keeps the oil from uh, pouring too fast out of the dispenser. But nonetheless, there we go. Should probably do the sides as well. But that sure didn't take long. Which means now we move to the next step. See how our dough looks. I don't think this looks too badly. Okay, so now in it goes. And we just simply fill out the pan. It is going to uh, bounce back 
So that is one of the things that there is some resistance because of the gluten. However, this much dough will easily fill up this uh, 12 inch skillet. Okay, so we stretch this out. There we go. And don't worry if it doesn't completely go to the edges. The, the point is, is that we are now going to wait about another 10 minutes for the dough to relax. After that point, we will be able to uh, completely reach the edges of the pan. So, cover this one last time and let's put this aside. This will go in the sink. Put this aside and we can start preparing a little bit of pizza sauce. Da, 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 da. All right, sauce, here we go. He uses um, tomato paste, which I do not have, but he also uses an immersion blender, which I do not have right now. I gave it to Jamie. <laughs> okay. And did I remember another bowl? Yes, I did. Um, okay, here we go. However, one thing I forgot to do is open this can in advance. And that is some crushed tomatoes. I like using crushed tomatoes myself. I know I'm tempted, but no, I'm not going to. Instead of tomato paste, I could try mixing a little bit of ketchup in with this, but no, I'm not going to do that. So, just a little bit of that. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Crushed tomatoes are crushed pretty good. I've seen some that didn't look so, uh, this almost looks like puree. I like that. Okay, now from here, uh, a little bit of garlic powder, about a teaspoon. This I don't really have to measure. <laughs> a little bit of garlic powder. About a teaspoon of oregano. Teaspoon of basil. And this guy likes using a pinch of what he calls chili flakes. or in my case, red pepper flakes. Okay. But yeah, pizza sauce is so easy. I mean, I know there are very fancy pizza sauces out there, but I mean, really, it's like even if you're going to, I mean, if you say, oh, I'm just going to get a can of ragu or what's the other one, uh, Francesco Rinaldi or something, I mean, it's a lot less expensive, really, to make it yourself, especially since if you want the stuff with the meat, you can just throw in the meat or mushrooms or peppers or uh, whatever you want. But there we go. We've got a nice basic and simple pizza sauce. I should probably throw in a little bit of salt and pepper, even though he doesn't call for it. Let's 
Um, Especially since I love pepper. But nonetheless, we've got a nice and simple pizza sauce. And in fact, there's going to be more than enough, as he says, for one pizza here. This is probably like three pizzas worth, which means what he's going to do, what he does is just simply sticks it in the fridge because apparently he eats pizza so often that uh, the rest of these will go on to other pies very soon. Nonetheless, there we go. Very basic pizza sauce. And now the build. Okay, yeah. Uh, we are already just about at the point where we're going to be making our pizza. And at this point, yeah, I mean, we're at 55 minutes. Baking the pizza is only going to take like about 15 minutes or so in this 550-degree gas oven. So I think we're at the fun part, meaning that if you were making pizza with your kids, now's the part where you would call them into the kitchen. And here it is. And now, as you can see now, in fact, the dough easily gets all the way to the edge of the pan and does not spring back. That's because we let the dough rest. So there we go. We've got a 12-inch pizza uh, in the making with no difficulty at all. So now is the part where we get to have some fun. And the pepperoni is still in the fridge. Okay, well, let's do this quickly. Uh, where did I do my, where did I just throw that spoon? Oh, yeah, it's right here with the sauce. Shoot. Okay, here we go. Plop. 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 And start spreading it out. And as pointed out, since this is pan pizza, you don't have to leave a crust. You can if you want, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can go all the way to the edge of your pie. And considering how a lot of people just simply don't eat the crust, I think we can see the appeal of that. Nonetheless, all we really need is a thin coating. You know, we don't have to drown it in sauce. And anyway, if we do, all of that liquid could very well affect the crust. So we really don't need much more than this. All right. I, and again, Anne, I know we, we built pizzas when we were living together. I can only hope you've been able to make a few with your uh, nieces. Okay. Next up, <laughs> the cheese. And yeah, here I admit I'm cheating. You know, everybody says the same thing. Great your own mozzarella, which is a great thing. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And I've done it too, and it is really good. But I still don't have a problem with using the uh, shredded store-bought stuff. Well, actually, there is one big difference, unfortunately. At the store, about all you can find these days is the part skim stuff. And if you really want good pull on your cheese, you really want to use the whole milk mozzarella, which I admit I simply can't seem to find at the store. On the other hand, even blocks of it, uh, unless I want to pay a lot of money, unfortunately, for really fancy mozzarella, then you can, then you can get the whole milk stuff. But unfortunately, if you're on a budget, probably going to have to end up doing it this way but there we go as he says again you want to resist the urge like it or not to completely white out the pizza so because again we don't want it to just turn into a, a greasy mass so there we go for the pizza now if you'll excuse me one moment again i left the uh, pepperoni in the fridge and this way i get to put these things back in the fridge what I do. Okay. Deal with that. Okay. 
And yeah, that's the other thing. Um, everything's gotten more expensive these days, even the more cheaper uh, type of store-bought pepperoni, which I still don't have a problem with, and I never have. Um, yeah, that's the other thing. I think I mentioned already, our dear friend, why isn't this coming out? Don't tell me I'm going to have to open this up the hard way. Excuse me one second. Uh... Come on. Nope. All right. We'll have to do it the hard way. Anyway, as I was saying... Mm. Those uh, YouTube videos that are like live-action cartoons where they use only the finest and most expensive ingredients. They look great, and I have no doubt whatsoever that they taste great. But again, if you were doing this, say especially if this was a weeknight, uh, I'm sure you would probably end up getting, at least in some parts of the ingredients, probably end up getting the cheaper stuff too. Because, again, there's really nothing wrong with that. After all, this little bit of pepperoni here. Yeah, once this thing's all cooked, I don't think anybody would complain about it. Because there we go. Mm. Besides, I love pepperoni. Oh, no, mm -hmm. no. Mm-hmm. There's the stove. All right. Which means one more thing I'm going to put on this that I want that Brian didn't mention in his recipe. Parmesan Romano. You know, the other kind of cheese. Hmm. Which I forgot to open up. There we go. This is one thing I like on top of my pizzas as well. More cheese. Of course, you can put whatever you want in your pizza. And I have never, I have Pretty much whatever it is on pizza, I've loved it. Let me give one second. I'll get back to that in a moment. All right, because it's time to get this thing into the oven. Okay, so now comes the fun part. I don't want to get these wires in the way, excuse me. There we go. We rest it. There we go. And we rest it on top of the large pizza pan. And with that, it's only going to take like about 10 to 15 minutes or so to cook this pizza, or at least I certainly hope so. But there we go. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, I was saying something. I like uh, the uh, grated cheese on top of my pizza. Um, and I was about to say something else, and now, of course, it's completely slipped my mind. Oh, well. Nonetheless. Um Okay, well, actually, I haven't been following the comments yet, so now's a good chance to uh, come back and do that. Hmm. All right, let's go up in these comments a little bit. Hmm. Uh, Cynthia Wesley, show that. Something, okay, for some reason, this one was hidden. I need to, um, you know, I like next to a church and they can smell, oh, I live next to a church and they can smell my fried chicken every time. Yes, indeed. Uh, Y'all having a church so I can, ha yeah, have something that's quiet, no, no smell. 
Okay, look, I have two eggs, cup of sugar, salt, nor, bre nor bread. Um, oh, that's Cynthia Wesley. Okay, wish I could hand you some basil from my garden. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, fresh basil on pizza. Yeah, there we go. You can uh, get yourself a, an awesome... Um, an awesome uh, Neapolitan pizza that way, and I'm definitely looking forward to the chance to do that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that's another yet another project I can do now that I have my own yard. I can actually try my luck at starting my own garden, an, an herb garden, <laughs> and see how great I am at murdering innocent thyme and basil plants. And uh, we could always go from there. <laughs> um. Okay, looking a little further down, what kind of toppings do we have? Uh, well, Anne, as you saw, it's a pretty basic uh, pepperoni pizza recipe there. The sauce, the mozzarella, the pepperoni, and I threw some additional grated cheese on top. Um, if, I, if I'd wanted to, I suppose I could have caramelized some onions in advance, and that probably wouldn't have been a bad thing either. So, but oh, yeah, that's the that's what I was saying. Yeah, you can have pretty much any toppings you want on your pizza, and yeah, though that, um, this is one of those silly arguments that I think means absolutely nothing. You know, the ones about no, you can't have pineapple on pizza, or you can't have this, or you can't have that on pizza. Bull. You're the one eating it. They're not. So if you want to put spam and pineapples and mushrooms and sausage and, oh, I don't know. Um, let's just call it <clears throat> cannabis on your pizza. You can put whatever you want on it. It's your pizza. You're eating it. So why should uh, you know, anybody else be upset about about that. So I'm, um, yeah, that is an argument that I have never been, um, been interested in. And in fact, that's yet another thing I have to do. I have to make myself a, um, pepper. I have to do an Hawaiian style pizza with, uh, so with, um, spam and, uh, pineapple, especially so that I can tick off some people on YouTube. Hmm. I love, love mushrooms. Yes, indeed. Uh, while pizza, which white pizza with shrooms and broccoli. Yeah, that's another one about thing about broccoli on pizza. Yes, I'm I'm a Hawaiian and margarita girl myself. Mm hmm. As I said, I have no arguments at all. Somebody says anchovies are great. I'm not crazy about anchovies, but there we go again. If you want anchovies on your pizza, put it on your pizza. So why not? Uh, my nieces love cast iron pizza. Oh, good. You've made it. I'm really glad to hear that. So, yeah, we kids love to do sleepovers and pizza. Hmm. I buy the whole milk blocks. Yes, the pizza still works. Uh, works out to cost less than a frozen one. Oh, yeah, definitely. That I mean, that is one of the big reasons why I enjoy do and why it's good to do these things from scratch. They're less expensive. I mean, as I mentioned already, these days, can anybody get a takeout pizza with all the delivery charges and everything else for anywhere less than $30 to $50? And that's if you're using a so-called deal from the pizza shop. Otherwise, you might end up paying that much for a single pizza delivery. So, yeah, no, compared to that, getting a pizza with, um, you know, as I said, making it yourself in cast iron, well, there you go. There, if that's not a good reason to get a big cast iron pan, I mean, I, it's hard to think of another one. As I just mentioned, $30 to $50 for one uh, pizza delivery. $30 to $50, you can get yourself a big 15 inch cast iron skillet if you find it at, like maybe at uh, TJ Maxx for instance or the Lodge pizza pan or something so or even if you go with an Asian made one which are even cheaper I mean hell Walmart sells their own store brand the Ozark Trail cast iron and you can get yourself a 15 inch uh, cast iron skillet at Walmart for their brand with for less than $20 so um, I know what they say, you get what you pay for. But nonetheless, the point being, either way, it's less than you get, a lot less than paying for pizza delivery. And of course, you can make so many other things in that pan. Uh, as somebody says here, 
Gourmet cookies for one. Exactly. I mean, you've seen me make those giant cookies in old Stumpy. It's one of the favorite things I like to make in my cast iron. Giant cookies. If you all add a little anchovy paste to the sauce, it really adds a subtle something. Fish sauce is fermented anchovies. Well, that's an idea. Maybe I should have done that. I should have thrown some fish sauce in this sauce as I was mixing it tonight. I simply did not think of it. So... Oh, yeah, buck knife, you can't live without one. Oh, absolutely, I always carry a pocket knife for that reason. You never know when it's going to come in handy. I just got to remember, I got to be careful about that when I go to places that require a metal detector. <laughs> um, more than once, I've had that kept knife uh, confiscated, and I had to ask them to reserve it or send it back to me. So, yeah, hmm. Um, you can mush up anchovies and mix it in, in the sauce. It adds a secret layer of, what's that say, flock? Oh, oh, I, uh, or you wouldn't guess, or secret layer, I'm thinking he's probably talking about flavor. Yes, exactly. So, and, oh, yeah, here's one of the other things I, I've missed, I haven't been able to do for years. I can actually see the pizza. There's a, there, uh, here's an oven light. My other oven did not have a window or an oven light. So let's uh, take a look down here. And try not to make you all dizzy. Am I loving this stove? You tell me. <laughs> I am loving this stove. Yes. <laughs> so little things like having an oven light. Oh, man, what a luxury. And I definitely intend to get a lot of use out of that. So have you got your cast iron unpacked and back on your rack? Uh, the vast majority of my cast iron is, in fact, unpacked. I'm still trying to find the proper ways to arrange it. It's spread out a lot more than it was in my other apartment. There is not one huge, gigantic six foot or seven foot cast iron rack. Right now I have two, actually three, no, two uh, three foot cast iron racks and one smaller four foot cast iron rack. So, <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's looking tasty. Yeah, I'm beginning to smell it already. And you know what they say? If you can smell it, it's done. Well, let me take one more look. Looks like it's starting to bubble, but I think I'm going to risk it. Because I don't see any browning on the edges yet. So I think I'm going to hold tight for another couple of minutes at least. So <laughs> we want to know if you deliver. <laughs> um, well, I can deliver, but my delivery range is very short, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, I'm enjoying this. And, and, like, and I, I will give credit again to YouTube chef Brian Lagerstrom because, again, this was what he called one-hour pan pizza. You know, we made this entire thing from scratch here on YouTube Live. We we even mixed the dough uh, here uh, within the last uh, hour or so. So um, this is, again, this is something to consider. This is one of those projects that, Again, you could make with your kids. If they want pizza that night and and you have a tight budget, we all have a tight budget, then this is something certain something to consider because it's pizza within one hour. How about that? And, and who knows? I mean, if I had enough hands or if I had helpers that like, there's no reason at all why we could not have made two pizzas because it was really that easy. I have enough pepperoni, I have enough mozzarella, and I have enough sauce. Um, I even I even have enough bread flour. So there we go. We are off to a, uh, de yeah, all of this pizza really did not cost very much. And uh, yeah, pizza in one hour or it's free. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you can practically say that. So um, as somebody pointed out, the cost of these ingredients are probably even less than a store-bought frozen pizza, 
which these days seems to be going for about seven or eight dollars by itself as well. So uh, I'm not even going to count those uh, one or two dollar Wally World frozen microwave pizzas. Oh, God, I remember those. <laughs> Back in my old my old world, we actually did used to eat those things regularly. <laughs> and yeah, that is one thing I am certainly not missing, that's for sure. <laughs> Do the Brian dance as we grab a slice. Oh, you've seen his channel. Yeah, the part where he goes, let's eat this thing. <laughs> well, if, if this pizza is going to be as hot as I expect it is, I might end up doing that dance just for that reason if I burn my mouth. <laughs> Do you find that you're cooking even more now that you can't go into the office? Um, so far, I think so. I mean, I mean, especially the last couple of months for various reasons, including packing and preparing, as well as other personal drama, my cooking has really been a lot less than I would have liked, especially since I've said before, I consider cooking to be a type of therapy. And boy, do I need that or meditation even. That's not, that's another good word for it. Um, and yeah, so far already, I mean, I like the fact that I've been trying to do so far at least two videos per week, even if one of them is just a short. Um, it's certainly helping the uh, views on my channel and the analytics, which of course is good for me, if I may say so. But also, again, it's really giving me stuff to do. Um, heck, I've got to put together yet that unboxing video uh, that I made for the uh, Lodge Skull uh, pan. So, uh, I've got that to do. I've also seen a whole bunch of little things that I want to give a try because most of them seem pretty easy. I mean, that's where I got the inspiration to do that, uh, steak with the mac and cheese rub on it, which turned out okay. I mean, it was a decent steak. It's steak. What can I say? But no, it's not exactly the type of thing that's changed my life. This stove is changing my life. <laughs> <laughs> and let's take one more look at that pizza. Oops, turn that light back on. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're definitely getting that uh, dark, uh, the dark spots that I was looking for. Time to take out the pizza. So, let's get this going. Come on, there we go. Oven goes off. And let's get this thing out of the oven. <laughs> really hot. We need gloves. And here we go. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Holy cow, is this hot. Ow, 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 ow. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> oh, but there we are. May have actually been in for about a minute or so, long, a bit too long. I mean, there are dark spots on the top. Nonetheless, that's what we have. Um, okay. That's also... Break out the camera, the phone camera, and snap a couple of pictures. That'll make a good title uh, photo for this video, in fact. But there we are. Let me try to get more of a close up now, in fact. And we go down a little bit. But there we go. And again, thanks to that recipe from Brian Lagerstrom. Yeah, it may be cold before you get to the, yeah, before you get to my house. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, that's the other thing, though. I've got to let this pizza cool off. So unfortunately, no, you're not going to see me doing the Brian dance tonight. <laughs> because, yeah, I definitely am going to have to get this thing out of the pan I could probably get it out of the pan within the next minute or so because there's another thing I've loved about uh, making these pizzas in cast iron. Let me get a different glove. Holy cow, that thing looks hot. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Let's 
try this one. All right. Get out the spatula. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. And here is the other thing I really love about making pizza in cast iron. Voila. Uh -huh. All right, let me lift this pan carefully and let me show you. No sticking. But there we go. Let's see. Let's check one thing. Oh, yeah. We definitely even have a nice browning on the bottom here, which is another great reason to make this thing in cast iron. Probably his suggestion of actually heating up a uh, cast iron pan and then placing this one on it, that was probably a very good idea as well. So let me move this over a little bit so that it's centered. But nonetheless, there we go. And it's a little flatter on one side than the other, but I think that's just because of the way the dough turned out. <laughs> Nonetheless, we have got ourselves a nice 12-inch cast iron pizza. And it was indeed made from scratch in a little more than an hour. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it took longer here because I did this live, you know, talking my way through and doing this all on video. I'm betting if you just simply followed the recipe and didn't have to worry about uh, having an audience watching, you could probably have done this, oh, I'm guessing in just that, just about maybe a tiny bit more than an hour from start to finish. So there you go. If That's either a weeknight project, a weekend project, but the point being is you've got one hour pizza and look at the results. <laughs> Again, these cores here are stuck. There we go. Okay, one last time there at last. Now, I can, as the oven cools off, let's see what we have. Well, I certainly hope so, Papa. Dan, Homer Simpson drooling. Uh, crafts for others. I am watching and taking notes for my med medical cooking final. <laughs> now, mind you, but majorly hungry. Yeah, one hour dinner and breakfast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at dumb sandwich meat. Well, that's all right. Um, there's nothing wrong with sandwich meat. I mean, whatever works. So, besides, it does take some effort. There's no denying that. But this is definitely a lot of fun, and I've said that enough times before, that I enjoy these uh, live videos really largely because of you folks commenting, and that really, really helps. Um, but yeah, making this pizza was a lot of fun, and it, yeah, and it certainly has helped calm me down for tonight, so I certainly like that. <laughs> Attitude is more relaxed? Well, I suppose so. Uh, but as I said, it's the cooking that does a lot of it. I honestly consider this, I've said this before, to be a form of meditation because really, as again, it helps me to concentrate on what I'm doing. It helps me to just pretty much block out the outside of the world, just calm down, lose myself in pizza, and that's not a bad thing. So I don't see why I can't actually consider this to be a uh, meditation. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, war in Ukraine. Yes, I always mean to do a before and after, but I always forget because I'm so excited to eat it. <laughs> well, there is that, yes. <laughs> uh, I've been a glutton for frozen mystic pizza you find in the stores. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, do you find, oh, no, you answered, I answered that one already. So, I love breakfast pizza, eggs, bacon, peppers, and yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't do a breakfast pizza. Prepare this in the morning, and instead of pepperoni, put sausage on it. Maybe even crack a couple of eggs on the top and see how well the eggs cook. 
or maybe actually put the eggs in afterwards, like after close to an hour or something, so that you will have cooked eggs and not burned eggs when the pizza comes out of the oven. But why not? So <laughs> red beans and rice and cauliflower is good. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm not dissing that either. Ah, uh, I can't wait an hour. I go by my favorite Italian deli and buy crust that's already prepared. Okay, this is one other thing that I like. Uh, there was a guy on the cast iron cooking group by the name of John Williams. No, not that John Williams, another John Williams. He was a chef, in fact. Um, but his motto that I took to heart was, in cooking, there is no cheating. There are only shortcuts. And I certainly agree there. So, because again, you're cooking for yourself here. I mean, but, but the only reason, the only way at all you could get in trouble for doing things like using shredded mozzarella or using a store-bought crust or anything like that is if you were cooking for some kind of a competition where they judge and mark and score points for those kind of things. But as it stands right now, you're cooking for yourself and your family. So you really want to do what you want to do, whatever pleases you the most. So that means if you go and get yourself a pre-store-bought crust, then you can do that. There's no reason at all. I mean, I'm still using that uh, shredded mozzarella, but I could have uh, shredded my own mozzarella. I honestly just didn't feel like it. And but nonetheless, I'm not complaining about this uh, one bit. So let's do one more thing. And here it is. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Mm -hmm. And as a result, here is our pizza, which again, let's take a look at the bottom. Let's try to take a look at the bottom. There we go. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Let me spread this out so that will help the pizza cool off. But look at this thick crust, too. This is definitely not a thin crust pizza. I mean, it's definitely uh, got a bready crust to it. So those who like chew on their crust will like this, and I like a chewy crust. I, I mean, I enjoy a crunchy crust, but given a choice, I would take a chewy crust over a crunchy one. But that's just me. So, uh, I know looking at, I know that it's looking at us. It must be a Louisiana thing. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I need a slice of my life. Well, yeah, I know. And then uh, all I can say is that if and when you have a chance to come up and visit, I will make you a uh, nice cheese pizza or maybe one with uh, broccoli or other veggies on it. Oh, yeah, your favorite, the Carmine pizza. I haven't forgotten. So, <laughs> but there we go. Just had to step out. Hello, Jose Lachias, still driving home. And uh, ever try to do stuffed crust and cast iron? I have not yet done stuffed crust, but yeah, I always keep forgetting as well. That's yet another thing I have to do one of these days. So, but nonetheless, I'm looking forward to enjoying some pan pizza here because here it is. And with that, well, we have indeed gone on to our uh, usual time. So all I have to do, as I said, is let this thing cool off and I'll be enjoying some pizza. But more importantly, I hope you folks have enjoyed this as well, or at least enjoyed watching it. I give a lot of credit once again to Brian Lagerstrom for this recipe. This was easy to do. Remember, I was worried that the dough would have dried out too much, but this looks fantastic. So, um, I'm, so I can only give him the high marks for that. It's, it's, it's simple, it's inexpensive, and it's a lot of fun. Fun, and that's probably the most important thing more than almost anything else, except of course eating it. <laughs> so, and I and once again, thank you everybody for showing up here. I mean, this, as I said already, is that's the most important thing about the YouTube live videos. I love uh, 
having you folks commenting and being here and watching and make and being snarky and making fun and watching all my mistakes and everything because that again is what make these live videos uh, so much fun yeah and that's why I'm one of the few people dumb enough to actually try cooking in a live environment <laughs> because you get to see all my screw up and boy do I make a lot of them. But there we go. That's why I call them learning experiences. This pizza has definitely been a success and not just a learning experience. So I can only ask that you give it a try at some point. I mean, if you have a cast iron pan, give this a try. Even if you only own a 10-inch cast iron skillet, you can still give this a try. And this is the result. There we go. Save yourself some money. Have some fun with your... Uh, significant other and your kids or both or roommates or whoever have some fun making pizza and best of all you get to enjoy the results and having said that i think i've already said next week i think i'm going to try baking in this cast iron in this cast iron in this gas oven i'm going to break out the cast iron bunt pan and we will make ourselves a cake especially since next week is the first day of fall oh god <laughs> and so we should definitely do a cake to celebrate the, um, well, the equinox. And we will continue from there. And thank you, everybody, for uh, really for uh, taking part in my channel and for watching. And I do my best to entertain you. And thank you especially for everyone for showing up. So, and thank you. Have yourselves a good evening, folks. And it, it is a work night, so let's all relax and get some sleep tonight. And most of all, I'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good evening.